Thank you for being there. Okay, this is a story about love. So I think that it's the moment to talk about love. What is the meaning of loving what you do? It's not a rhetorical question. I want an answer from you. I really want an answer. What is the meaning for you of doing what you love? Go on. No one else? Okay. All of those were good answer. Okay. I have another question for you. And what do you love? It's another non rhetorical question. What do you love? Myself. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> Those are good answers too. I can say to you uh, what I love. I love coffee, obviously, but <laughs> I love innovation. Okay, and thankfully, I'm not the only one. I'm lucky enough to work with people that love innovation too and bring innovation to the world every day. I don't, don't work in Wonderland. But I work for Second Quadrant. I'm Giulio Calacocci, I'm an open source developer, and I, every day I work with Python, writing in Python for Postgres and with Postgres. If you want to tweet something, you can use the EuroPython hashtag or the PMP love hashtag for this talk. So I promised you a love story. Probably one of the biggest love story of all there is the match made in heaven between uh, Python and Postgres. You can see the elephant and the Python in love between each other because one of the questions that I've been asked not only yesterday but also in different conferences was but Python and Postgres get along together well. And um, yes. A lot. They have a lot of things in common. Really, a lot of things in common. First one, the first letter is a P. And they are both open source. Both of them have a huge, really, really huge community that is really, really involved in the uh, development of, um, of the programming language and of the database. In the case of Postgres, the community is responsible for the robustness of the database. Both are powerful. Python is powerful, is flexible. Uh, Postgres is powerful and stable. And both of them are really well documented. You can find a lot of documentation on a lot of stuff on the internet on Python and Postgres together. Let, you know already Python because this is a Python conference. So please, allow me to introduce you Postgres. One important thing, the name is PostgreSQL or Postgres, or if you feel like a close friend, PG, okay? If you call Postgres like this, the elephant will be happy. Please, 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 please don't call him Postgres or PostgreSQL, or any other iteration between the letters of the name. Otherwise, the elephant will be confused. Uh, I'm not sure that he will answer your questions. OK. Postgres, or PostgreSQL, OK, is de facto the default database choice for many Python developers. There are a lot of developers around the world that uh, have chosen Postgres as a default database for the application. Obviously, uh, most, of proje most projects support more than one database, but usually tests and uh, development is done in Postgres. Why? 
Because Postgres is free, is free as a speech. Postgres is stable. Postgres is feature rich, and we are going to see just the tip of the iceberg of the feature that are part of Postgres. And Postgres is released frequently. Postgres is released uh, once a year for um, with a um, big release with uh, new features, and one um, time every three months with bug fixes and, and minor features. We have a lot of uh, features because it's feature rich. In Postgres, the first one is the MDCC, that obviously is not something that only Postgres implement, but it's something that Postgres support, and is um, the multi-version concurrency control that is something that uh, makes you sure that your transactions are isolated between others. So when you do something, your database is always consistent. Because the first directive for a database is to keep your data safe. And Postgres, it's particularly good in doing that. I've seen databases during my work crashing in really bad ways, but I've seen people recovering the, mm, the data until the moment of the crash. So Postgres is safe. The Postgres have the transactional DDL. That is something that is less common than MVCC. And um, basically, when you do a change to your uh, table, for example, you drop a column, okay? If you do that on a transaction, that action is transactional. Every operation that involves changing the, the, your database is safe and transactional. So who is working on the database on that moment is safe until the transaction is committed. It is something that not happens in every kind of database. Uh, every, every biggest database that, like Oracle don't, does not support something like this. Okay? Postgres support table scenaritans. Table scenaritans is something that allows you to create a father table with a lot of uh, one or more child tables that allow you to um, split your data in subtables and access them through the father table following a logic. And from Postgres 9.5, you can do that also on remote servers. So you can split and shard your data on remote servers and uh, split evenly the, the, um, the data and the load on different instances of Postgres. Postgres support full text, full text search. Yes, yeah, something is really important, especially for people that use Django and develop in Django. Uh, it's so important that Django have a, a plugin that allow you to use full text search on Postgres easily. Then we have the replication. Replication is something that allows you to create a new uh, a server that is a master and clone the server on another instance that is a standby. The standby is always synchronized with the master. And in case of disaster, if the master goes down, you can promote the standby and reduce to the minimum the downtime in case of, of a bad situation. Then, Postgres supports physical backup. And this is cool because, uh, at least for me, because I am a um, disaster recovery expert, okay? Physical backup is something that makes you copy your data directory while your service is running. You don't have to stop your server to make a backup. You'd, and you're gonna copy the physical file of the server and not asking for a SQL dump. So everything happens while the server is running with no downtime for you. So taking backups, it's easier and it's faster. Okay. Postgres supports the point in time recovery. That's it, like a kind of magic because if you're someone drops a table at 10 o'clock in the morning, you can recover your database at, at 9 and 59 and restart just a second before the disaster. Then supports JSONB. JSONB is a, a specific type of data that was thinking for people that like to use JSON, especially people that may like 
the NoSQL type of uh, data that can store entire documents written in JSON inside your database so you can mix between a relational database and something different. And another cool thing that we will talk about it later, okay, but now I introduce it to you, are the foreign data wrapper, FDV. It allow you to connect to every kind of source of uh, data outside the database. For example, you could connect to another database, not only Postgres, but also MySQL, Oracle, DB2, or you can use as a source uh, a text file, you can use a source a remote service. You can use everything and import in your database as a table, and you can do queries on that, and if the remote source allows it, you can also insert data, okay? right straight inside your database. Okay, and we have also PostJS. PostJS is geospatial extension uh, that adds extra types, extra functions, extra operations, uh, index announcement for handling geospatial data. They have, uh, PostJS have a lot of functions that allow you to um, move inside a uh, um, geographic area and uh, uh, find points that are near. And it's very important for uh, people that um, develop using GIS. This uh, sim the relation between Postgres and Python is a virtuous cycle because, as I said, a lot of developers, Python developers choose Postgres. And because of this, the software that is based on Postgres and as example that are based on Postgres and documentation that are for Postgres, it's better than the other. So more people is going to use them. So PostgreSQL community grows. If the PostgreSQL community grows, the database grows stronger. If the database grows stronger, more people is going to use Python and Postgres together. And this is a cycle because, because of this, the Python community grows and the, the cycle restarts. And this is important. But now it's time to talk about the love story and get down, let's get down in business. And this is a showcase of things that have been done using Python and Postgres. And because a lot of people ask me, OK, but can you tell me at least a couple of projects that have been created using Python and Postgres? <coughs> Sorry. Yes, I can. I, I created a talk on that. So, fifth thing, we want to connect to Postgres using Python. We have a lot of Python ORMs like SQL Alchemy, PeeWee, Pony ORM, and Django ORM. Okay? They are written in Python and they handle Postgres. And they have one thing in common. Every ORM uh, that I named uses PsychoPG2. It is, no, no, clap your hands because it's a moment of Italian pride for me because the main developers of PsychoPG2 are Italian. <laughs> uh, really? So PsychoPG2 uh, implements the Python DB API 2.0. It's based on LibPQ that are the libraries, that are the standard libraries for Postgres. And it's open source because LG GPL. So it's really free. It's really easy, easy to use. So much easy that a lot of people use it. And I've seen projects um, around the, the internet wrapping PsychonPG2 to uh, create a, an even easier interface for that. So it's really, really powerful. Obviously, it's not the only one. There are a lot of other drivers. These are the most famous. We have PyPostgreSQL, PyGreSQL, PG8000, OCPGDB, and a lot of words and letters together. But <laughs> By the way, PsychoPG2 is not the only one. There are a lot. And everyone is valid. 
okay, what if I tell you that you can use Python inside Postgres? Every, let's say, serious database usually have an internal procedural language that allow you to write procedure to uh, handle your data in a faster way that you would do in, in an external program, okay? Postgres allow you to um, load Python inside the database and use Python and these libraries inside your database to modify your data. You can do, use Python to react to action like insert or update, or you can uh, use it to prepare your data for a, a huge dump of data, or what do you want. You can use Postgres in Python, Python inside the Postgres, and write Python code inside Postgres. And this adds the flexibility of Python straight inside Postgres. But wait, I promised you that I would talk more about foreign data wrapper. As I said, you can use the foreign data wrapper technology to connect to something external. Usually, as I said, foreign data wrappers are written in C. But if you use Multicorn, that is a software uh, that's totally, that is written in Python, you can use Python to write foreign data wrappers. In the 2016, in the Italian Python conference, I've had a talk on this, and i written just for fun, free foreign data wrappers, that were, I think the longest one was 150 lines of code, comments included, that allow, allow me to connect, for example, to SoundCloud and uh, query the service asking for songs straight inside the database, and then I was able to uh, see the results of my research on a table. And that project started because I was really trying to organize my music collection, and then Postgres helped me to do that. If you want to see that, you can find the, co the code on my GitHub, is that one. There is also a video, unfortunately it's in Italian, so if you don't understand Italian, you can skip that. Another thing that you want after having loaded the data through foreign data wrappers, having loaded uh, Python in, inside your Postgres, is to back up your database. Because I really can't stress enough people of the importance of making a backup. You can do that using Python. There are a couple of software that allow you to do that. The most famous probably are wall -E, that is a really nice program that uh, uh, really acts nicely with uh, AWS and S3 from Amazon. And another one that is a bit famous uh, is Barman. So let's talk about Barman. Why you would like to use Barman? Because it's open source. It's one of the most used backup tool for PostgreSQL. It's feature rich. It's easy to use because one of the points that the developers have while uh, developing it is to keep it simple. And it's developed by a team of nice people. How I know that? Because I'm one of those people. I'm one of the Barman developers. So let me introduce Barman more a bit. We are going to release the 2.2 version. The alpha version of the 2.2 will be released on July 17. And the killer feature that we are going to introduce is the rsync based parallel backup that allow you to copy faster and really, really faster because we have done some tests on that, copy a huge database on your backup server. And this is important because like I said, more people use a Python software to, using, with Postgres, the, 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 mm, the better the software become. And Barman is an example of that. I can say that because I work, I work on Barman for a lot of years. And Barman uh, grew stronger because of the people that reported back to us that founded some features 
because, like this one. And now, if Barman is stable, it's because of this. OK. <laughs> I'm not able to pronounce correctly. I have a, OK. So I'm going to call it HA, OK? The meaning of that word is that you want your database to be available to all the people most of the time, because if your database is down, probably the one of your concurrent is not. So the, the more you reduce your time, the better it is for you. How you can handle that? As I said before, we have streaming replication that allow you to synchronize more than one server with your master. Said so, how can you handle the promotion of one or more servers in case of disaster? You can use this Python software that's called Patroni, that is written by Zalando, so it's used by them. It's open source because they have an MIT license, it's written in Python, and it's based on Zookeeper or ATCD or console because you have more than one option. It depends on what you know. It's really powerful and um, to explain it simply, when your database shuts down, your master, there is a, a discussion between the other nodes that decide we, mm, what, which node will be promoted to the master, and it happens almost automatically. Okay, so no more calls at the middle of the night because the database is shut down. Obviously, we have to recover it, but you can do it the morning after. We have talked about database, we have talked about HA, now we want to handle our database, maybe easily, there are a lot of tools that allow you to do that. We have the OmniDB tool that is open source and have been recently rewritten using Django. Okay, the 2.0 version of this software has been rewritten from scratch using Django. It's cross-platform and have a nice PostgreSQL editor. And this software is written by two really amazing guys from Brazil, and now they work for Second Quadrant, so are, are my colleagues. Then we have another tool that is historically, um, works historically near Postgres, okay, is PG Admin 4, that is open source, it's multi-platform, uh, gives you the ability to see the plan of your query, because when you uh, create a query, um, Postgres analyzed it and decided how to act. You can see the plan that Postgres created for a query and you can see if you can optimize your query to be faster or to act differently. And another thing, and this is really, really, really useful, especially for developer, gives you the ability to debug the procedural language that it's called PLPGSQL uh, while writing uh, start procedure. So usually it's not easy to debug start procedures. You can do that putting a breakpoint on your code and step by step analyze it. After the graphical interface I showed you, because OmniDB and PG Admin 4 are graphical, okay, we have the command line. That is the tool that most of the DBA or the sysadmin loves. We have uh, the default client tool that is PSQL, that is part of the core of Postgres, is released with Postgres. It's really powerful and it's born to work with Postgres by the people that develop Postgres. And have a lot of meta comments that allow you to perform actions uh, like uh, retrieving descriptions of tables, retrieving descriptions of schemas, or uh, following foreign keys or listing database just with a backslash command. Usually it's a backslash and one letter, so it's faster and easy to use. But obviously it's not perfect. I have some issues, 
And browsing the web, searching for tools, nice tools for this presentation, I've discovered that is, exists a PGCLE that is obviously less powerful than PSQL, but gives you syntax alighting, smart completion, and always try to pretty print the output of, your, of the tables on your terminal. Obviously, it's not like PSQL, but if you have to write just a quick query, it's faster, okay? And the smart completion is obviously contextual of what you're writing. The last one is the workload analyzer, because you want to monitor how Postgres behave. You can do that using the software that is developed by Dalibo, that is a French company that works on Postgres like the second quadrant, that is open source and is composed by two parts. One part is an extension that resides in Postgres and is written obviously in C because it's part of Postgres. And one part is the user interface that is entirely write, written in Python and allow you to see real trying graphs and see performance chart so you can inspect your database while it's working and see when or why, or it helps you understand why your database is under load on that moment. If you have a huge amount of logs, or this uh, mm, fault of a couple of queries that are really long, for example, you can do that only monitoring your database. And this is a Python tool to do that. What I show you is just the tip of the iceberg of the possibility of the things that are around the world written in Python and Postgres. What I show you is the result of love and passion, and that's why I said that passion is a keyword for this talk. What I want from you is to get involved and spread love and being part of the virtuous cycle that I showed you before. To do that, participating in conferences like this or like these two that are the next conferences on Postgres, okay, that is, we have the Italian PG Day that it's going to happen in Milan in 2017, 13th of October, or the PostgreSQL Conference Europe that will happen in Warsaw on October 24, 27, 2017. In this conference, in these events, you can talk with people that uh, write the code of Postgres. You can talk with people that are there to help you to write better Python software with Postgres because it's their job. So it's important to meet these people and to get involved in that circle of, of virtuous cycle. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks, Julia. Who has questions for him? Oh, you. Uh, Hi. Thank you for interesting thank you. presentation. I'm curious about. Oops. I'm curious. Oh, okay. I'm curious about Po, which, you, uh, as I understand, allows you to get some statistics how the Postgres database works. Okay, no. You just don't hear it. Sorry for the technical issue. So, uh, you heard the question, I have to repeat that? No, okay, you asked me if the workload analyzer could impact the performance of a database. Okay, yes it could, marginally, but if you're in a situation uh, that your database is always uh, under EV workload, okay? Maybe you want to spend a bit of horsepower on trying to understand what's going on. It's something you can deactivate. It's an extension, it's part of Postgres, but you can 
uh, turn it on and off. So you can turn it on when you need it and turn it off, not impact the, your, impacting your uh, performances. Fine? Okay, good. Okay, Other questions? simple so we have like a table of one 100 million records right we want to do select one so is there anything specific to Postgres that's going to allow us to do faster queries and searches than let's say MySQL or some other database so if we have like a 100 million rows right and you want to do a select query just select one from those is there something specific to Postgres that's going to allow us to optimize the database, like clustering, indexing? Uh, I'm repeating the question because, uh, so I'm sure that everyone have, uh, heard. He asked me if there exists something that helps you to create uh, mm, faster queries. This is the, the sense of your question, right? Yeah. Uh, absolutely writing faster queries. Yes. As I said, uh, PG Admin 4, for example, uh, makes you see the plan of a query. So you, you write a simple query, that just like a select star from something with a million rows, that for process are not a lot of rows, to be honest. And you can see how Postgres intend to act on that query. And this is graphical. You see what happens, and you can decide that you can work and split easily that query in a query and a subquery, or something that's more performance-like. It depends on how Postgres react. What you are searching is just inside the database. It's part of Postgres. Okay, another question? Someone else? By the way, I will be at the second quadrant group booth in the, the Piazza room. Okay, so if you have questions, you can find me or you can search for this guy. Stand, stand up, Marco. Okay. For the technical question or if you want to uh, ask something that's more marketing or stuff related, you can ask to that girl that is there or to the girl that is in to the boot, okay? Okay. Do I have Thank a question down there? Ah, I didn't see you. Thanks a lot for your talk. I'll, I'll try this. If you, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, you talked a lot about the relationship between Python and, and Postgres, um, and I actually know this pretty well because we work with both uh, at my company. But I'm wondering, for other people who don't have experience with PostgreSQL yet, but are already Python developers, do you have any good um, how-to material or introduction so how they can learn more about using PostgreSQL with Python? Because I think people are pretty familiar with databases uh, in Python, so they might be using Mongo or MySQL or something. Uh, how can they get started with Postgres? Do you have any tips for them? <laughs> okay, so he asked me some tips, okay, to getting started in Postgres, maybe migrating from MySQL or uh, Oracle or stuff, right? Okay, the, probably the biggest tip I can give you is read the documentation, because Postgres documentation is really, really organized. And you can find what you need, exactly what you need, just with a simple search on the documentation website. There are a lot of tutorial on how to install Postgres, and usually for uh, biggest distribution, it's just a command line. line. And getting started, uh, it's almost pure SQL. Postgres is almost pure SQL. I've not 
strange construct. So if you know, generally speaking, SQL theory, you're able to use Postgres just out of the box. So one issue that we have um, when we're developing for databases is that we wind up with the schema. We may have hundreds of tables. We may have you know, dozens of store, you know, store procedures, functions, everything like that in the database. Uh, what is the best way to organize and to manage that process? And to, uh, do you know of any tools that allow you to actually manage and you know, keep all that stuff in sync? You can do it on the command line. Yes, you can do it on the command line. But are there tools that allow you, for example, that if you have a store procedure and you make a change to that store procedure, that you can automatically publish all the changes to the database, you know, from your repository? Can I answer using that? Yes, okay. There are tools, you, you have heard the question? Yeah, okay. There are tools that allow you to, that, to do that, are not written in Python, so we're not part of my presentation. There are tools that allow you to keep track of your changes and diff different schemas, see the changes, patch the schemas, and reload them. Then there are techniques on using Postgres to be, um, that um, allow you to do that with less impact. But our techniques are not a specific tool to do that. But uh, in my experience working in Second Quadrant in these years, I've seen people doing a lot of strange stuff to do that. And I've always seen that working. So Borges is tough. It can handle every kind of um, change. Uh, and because I said, it's transactional. You can try that. No, it's not. Roll back. Everything is good. OK? Perfect. So another question? Ah. It's more follow-up remark. <laughs> It's more a follow-up remark to what you just asked. There is a Lembeck from the same author as SQL Alchemy that is a Python tool to, that, to track schemas. I, he knows more, I guess, but doesn't do anything, everything, I guess, but might be worth looking into. All right, one more. I would like to finish. OK. And say one thing. If you search on Google for Postgres is awesome, on GitHub, okay, you will find a web page that have a list that is always updated of software for Postgres. So we will find the tools you were asking, you will find the collection of tools for Postgres. And if you don't know that, there is also Python is awesome. Okay, thank you. All right.